Since Jurgen Klopp arrived at Liverpool in 2015, we've seen them go from having one of the most functional midfields perhaps of all time to having a midfield that contains Thiago Alcantara, who is probably one of the best technical midfielders in the world. And in this video, I'm going to explain that evolution to you. So I'm going to talk to you about the four phases of Jurgen Klopp's tactical development. And the first phase is Gagan pressing. So we all know that Jurgen Klopp arrives in England, having been in Germany, coaching Borussia Dortmund, and he has been playing a really intense gegenpressing style, really direct attacking style, and he tries to implement those ideas at Liverpool when he arrives. So on the board in front of me, we've got Liverpool's famous 4-3-3. We'll just show you how the gegenpressing style works. So the first thing to remember about a Gagan pressing team is that they're not too worried about maintaining possession of the ball. What they're gonna be trying to do is get the ball here. They're gonna try and get it long quickly, as directly as they can towards goal. If they can get a goal by doing that, that's great. If not, and they lose the ball and the ball's turned over, then you've got all of these players compact around the ball so they can fall on the ball, win the ball back. And uh, the idea is, is that you can then win the ball back yourself. And because the opposition are unsettled, they're most vulnerable when they've just lost the ball, so the theory goes, you can then find these spaces and attack and score. So in possession, not too worried about retaining possession of the ball. It's all about turning over and attacking at speed. Now out of possession, let's say the opposition have the ball here, Liverpool have a really interesting zonal press. Let's just talk through that. So the first thing that will happen is that the wide players in the front three are gonna drop really wide. And the idea is that you're stopping these passes out wide. You're gonna force them to go through the middle. And then what you'll see is that Liverpool have their striker sort of in this area here, not really doing too much pressuring. He's not too worried about making that first pressing mo movement. But what you're gonna see is you're gonna see these tempting passes that open up into, into midfield players. And Liverpool are just gonna lure them into a trap, a uh, pressing trap as it's called. And the idea then is that you make these passes easy and as soon as that pass arrives at this midfielder, that's the trigger for your counter press. And as soon as that happens, what you'll see is these players moving towards their opponents, uh, forcing the ball back here. And then suddenly before you know it, all of the available passing lanes are closed and the counter press is strong. So in this system, it's really important to have midfielders who are really physically adept, who are much better at maybe the defensive side of the game than the technical side of the game, which is why Liverpool start off with such a functional midfield. Now this brings us to the second phase of Jurgen Klopp's tactical development at Liverpool, and that is control. Because there's a problem here, and that is this. When you're constantly playing the ball directly through into these areas, in the Bundesliga, it's all well and good because you have the talent to be able to pull it off. You have the talent to be able to uh, counter press against oppositions, and those oppositions maybe don't have the best build up players as well. And so you get a real upside there from, from being able to play in this way. When you find yourself in the Premier League and you're suddenly a mid table side, suddenly teams are able to actually break your counter press. So where previously Liverpool would be hoping to win the ball back in this situation, a good team may well play the ball through and then they're attacking. And the problem is, is that what happens is that you're just constantly giving the ball back to the opponent over and over again. And rather than generating attacks necessarily yourself, you're giving them possession back and they're able to build up and, and attack again. So the solution that Jurgen Klopp has to find is a way of maybe controlling games a little bit better. And he does that actually in two areas, both of which are located around the central midfield. So the first one is he drops the left-sided midfielder of the three back alongside the pivot player. So Emre Chan dropping alongside Jordan Henderson here. And this just gives you a bit of an overload deeper in the field. It means that you can possess the ball a little bit easier, a little bit longer. And what's gonna happen is that Liverpool are gonna be a little bit more discerning about playing these passes into the central spaces. They're not gonna make immediate passes. They're not worried about being super direct. They're actually more worried about containing the ball, controlling the ball, and not being counted on by opponents. The other change that is made is that the right side in midfield is actually pushed up the field a little bit. And we start seeing these sorts of triangles forming uh, around here between these three players, the striker, the wide player, and the midfielder. And again, that just gives you an overload. If the fullback pushes up, again, you've got an overload here and you can possess the ball a little bit longer. So you're just trying to take the sting out of the game, trying to control the ball, and you're trying to possess it a little bit longer. 
but there is still the sense that you are trying to counter press here and so it's it is really important that your midfielders are still functional so this brings us to the third moment in Jurgen Klopp's tactical development and I'm calling this creativity in wide spaces because when you have a midfield three who are largely functional the problem is is that you've got to get the ball to your strikers you've got to have some sort of creativity on the field which will allow you to score those goals and the midfield three are more about pressing counter pressing and winning the ball back and this is where Jurgen Klopp makes his big shift and that big shift is that he brings his creative players into the fullback areas so he brings in Trent Alexander-Arnold through the youth academy he plays as a right back and then they bring in Andrew Robertson uh, the whole player they whole go down they bring Andrew Robertson in and these two players become the fulcrum for Liverpool's creativity so we all know that Alexander-Arnold loves to get down the field he loves to play these whipped balls into the box here uh, that the strikers can attack causes a lot of goals we know Robertson is a really physical player he can hit bylines and he's going to be hitting cutbacks into the box again for the, the strikers to to get onto and this works really well with a functional midfield because let's say Alexander Arnold comes forward then your midfield three can just come across here cover the space that's left behind them and vice versa on the other side so you get your midfield three shuttling backwards and forwards and this was good enough for Liverpool to win the Premier League, the Champions League and a few domestic trophies as well. So clearly this tactical tweak worked. But the problem is, is that when you become really good, what happens is that oppositions start sitting deep against you. And that leads us to the fourth moment in Jurgen Klopp's tactical development, which is central creativity. And to talk about that, actually, I think it would be good for us to talk about what has happened this season, because we see a couple of things happen throughout the course of the season that show Jurgen Klopp trying to get around this problem. Of how do we make sure that all of our creativity isn't just coming through our fullbacks? Can we get better players in the central midfield spaces and generate chances in that way? So this is a team from early on in the season. And what we can see here that's really interesting is Harley, Harvey Elliott being played as a right-sided midfielder in the midfield three. Harvey Elliott's a super creative player. He was brought from Fulham. Uh, he was sent out on loan for a little while and came back really, really ready to play football. They played him from the beginning of the season and they had him as this advanced right-sided player forming this triangle with, with the striker and the wide player. And then again, we have Alexander-Arnold coming in here. Now, the other change that we see in this area actually is that Mohamed Salah has usually played uh, as a very inverted striker. So you, you want to get Mohamed Salah as close to goal as possible, you would think. Um, so you'd see him coming into these sorts of areas and attacking the goal. But this season, we actually see Mohamed Salah pushing wider and wider uh, and leaving this space then that both of these players could attack if they, if they needed to. Uh, and if Alexander-Arnold goes into this space to create from here, then Harvey Elliott will drop in in here. So again, we're thinking of ways to develop creativity in these sorts of spaces. The problem is, is that Harvey Elliott gets injured against Leeds fairly early on in the season and doesn't appear again. So Elliott drops out and we see a little bit of a shuffle in the midfield area. So um, we see Jordan Henderson brought in to replace Elliott. So now a functional player in that more creative position perhaps. And then Thiago Alcantara, just coming back from injury, uh, he can sit on this left-hand side. And what we see from Thiago is that he's gonna love sitting in this half space here, as we call it, on the left. And he's gonna dictate play, he's gonna find passes into the box along the floor, but he also plays these really nice passes where he can just dink the ball over the top for strikers to run onto as well. So two different ways that the midfield are being used to actually develop creativity from within the central space. And this shows up really nicely on this viz that I have in front of me here. So this is a viz that was produced by the Athletics' own John Muller. And we've got here three pass maps. You'll all have seen pass maps before, um, which show Liverpool through three seasons. But these are pass maps with a slight difference uh, because what we've done is we've implemented a possession value model into the viz as well. Now, a possession value model is just a model that allows you to start interpreting the data and showing when players are having more of a positive impact on your attacking play or a negative. And that's shown with this color chart here. So the, the more value you're adding to your team, the greener the play will be and the, the less value you're adding, the, the more red the play will be. And if we look at these pass maps here now, then through the last three seasons, in 1920, we've got our midfield three here. And as you can see, the, the right-sided central midfielder is the greenest of the lot. So you're getting a lot of uh, value added to the attacking play through this player here. And that makes sense because Liverpool, we know, like to attack down the, the right-hand side. And as we've seen, that right-sided midfielder is always pushing up and helping out with the play. On the left-hand side, this player is 
very yellow, so not adding much value to the team at all. And this carries on into the next season again. These two midfielders, the, the right side and the central, not adding as much value. But again, we're seeing this triangle here where a lot of the value is coming. When we come over to 2021, 20, 22, there's a bit of a change. So again, we've got our yellow centre midfielder here, not adding as much. We've got our triangle here that we've talked about. And interestingly, note how Mohamed Salah is moving further across in the last three seasons. So he starts out here, moves further across, and by, by now he's on the other side of this line. So getting wider, so the data is showing up well for him there. But then if we look at the other side here, the left-sided central midfielder, we can see the Thiago position is now much more green. So you're getting a lot more value in the attacking play from this area as well. So both of those final stages in Jurgen Klopp's evolution showing up really nicely in the numbers. So that is how Liverpool evolved from having a really functional midfield to having a midfield that had a few more creative players within it. And as we know, managers are always looking to evolve their teams. They can never stand still. And so no doubt this evolution will continue on into the future and no doubt it will be an interesting future. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.